Well, 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 it turns out Mitt Romney isn't actually a loyal member of the resistance after all. Shocker. Now, listen, he announced that he will in fact be siding with Republicans to move forward with Donald Trump's Supreme Court nominee. And, you know, if you are heartbroken by this because you thought maybe he'd do the right thing after voting to impeach Donald Trump, after being the only Republican senator to vote to impeach Donald Trump, I mean, you should never expect anything good to come from the Republican Party. Republicans are going to Republican, okay? Um, anytime there's an open question about whether or not they will do the right thing, you should always be cynical. You should never be optimistic because this party is a terrible party and Mitt Romney is a horrible human being who is a political opportunist. So he's not voting with Democrats unless it's going to benefit him. Now, I don't actually blame liberals for thinking that maybe there is a chance that Mitt Romney might side with them because there were reports coming out that Mitt Romney might actually be chosen by Joe Biden to be part of the administration, a secretary of state or something like that. Now, that's disgusting. The fact that maybe Joe Biden is considering that should make everyone outraged. However, if that were true, which maybe now I'm assuming it's not true, it's not unreasonable to think, you know, maybe Mitt Romney out of self-interest, not wanting to piss off his boss next year, might vote with the Democratic Party just because it's the right thing to do, since Republicans are the ones who set that precedent in 2016, saying we're not going to approve a Supreme Court nominee during an election year. But I mean, Mitt Romney didn't come through. So look, if you are hoping that this is going to be stopped because enough Republicans are going to, uh, you know, have the courage to do the right thing, it's not going to happen. Democrats now have to fight. They can't rely on Republicans to do the right thing. Even Republicans in, uh, you know, vulnerable seats in swing states. So that means Democrats, if they actually are serious about this, will use every single procedural tool that they have at their disposal to block this, to obstruct this, to do everything that they can to raise hell to make sure that this does not happen. We cannot allow Donald Trump to get a third Supreme Court nominee because that means that the conservative majority on that court will be 6-3. That means everything is on the table. It's already the case that collective bargaining rights, workers' rights, that's already going to be gutted. The ACA will officially be gutted if we have another Supreme Court nominee because Roberts isn't going to be the swing vote to side with the liberals on the court. Now they'll have a cushion. They'll have a 6-3 solid majority, and that means they could even repeal the ACA, which is a garbage program to begin with. But if they repeal that, that's a disaster. That means that protections for patients with pre-existing conditions vanish like that. That means that um, anyone who has insurance through the Affordable Care Act exchanges loses that. We're talking about tens 20 million people potentially, it's a disaster. So Democrats have to fight with everything that they've got because democracy is at stake here. Even social issues, abortion, marriage equality, these are all on the table if they have a 6-3 majority. They can do anything they want for decades, reshape this country for a generation or two. So they have to stop this. And I'm not seeing many signs of life from the Democratic Party. Admittedly, I'm not very optimistic. It seems as if Donald Trump will in fact get his way. Now, to his credit, Chuck Schumer did try to implement a legislative tool to uh, limit hearings to two hours. Other Democrats, such as Maggie Hassan, were complaining about this. I mean, it's, it's a sign that maybe he's willing to try something, but I just, I'm not feeling very optimistic. It's up to Democrats. But thankfully, there are some Democrats who want to fight but uh, I don't think enough are. Now, Ed Markey came out swinging expectedly, saying Mitch McConnell set the precedent. No Supreme Court vacancies filled in an election year. If he violates it, when Democrats control the Senate in the next Congress, we must abolish the filibuster and expand the Supreme Court. And this is exactly what I want to hear, because it seems like now, like I'm not saying they should give up, it seems like Trump's going to get his way. Mitch McConnell is going to make this happen. So if this is going to happen, then I hope that what Chuck Schumer means by saying nothing is off the table next year is that he's open to this. He's open to abolishing the filibuster and stacking the court. Democracy is at stake. You can't allow a Lochner era on steroids to take place at a time when we are facing climate catastrophe, when Americans could lose their health insurance. I mean, if you allow this, then you don't deserve to be in power. You should resign in shame. So what Ed Markey is saying here 
This is what I want to hear. Nothing is going to be ruled out if this happens because we have to save our democracy. We can't let this happen. We can't let them steal two Supreme Court seats. It's unacceptable. Now, um, this idea is something that was um, mulled over by the media and one Democrat in particular who is horrible, Dianne Feinstein, responded. And as NBC News reporter Sahil Kapoor explains, Feinstein on ending the filibuster and expanding SCOTUS. Quote, I don't believe in doing that. I think the filibuster serves a purpose. It is not often used. It's often less used now than when I first came. And I think it's part of the Senate that differentiates itself. Now, this um, is outrageous. So what Dianne Feinstein is doing is effectively siding with Republicans. She's saying, you know what? Still one, two Supreme Court seats from us and... We are going to just let you have it because uh, we have to uphold these uh, Senate norms. We're not going to do anything that might upset the status quo. I mean, Dianne Feinstein, I don't know how she sleeps at night. This is a terrible human being who doesn't care about anyone but herself. How could you literally just admit, I'm siding with Republicans. I might not vote for Donald Trump's nominee. But um, if it comes time to actually fight and stop that damage from a third Donald Trump nominee from being caused, I'm not going to do jack fucking shit. I'm not going to end the filibuster. We're not going to pack the court. <sighs> it's just, it's exhausting. Because, you know, the minute that we learned about Ruth Bader Ginsburg's death, I just thought, this is, uh, this is not going to go well for Democrats. They just... They don't know how to fight. They're fully incapable of trying to even know how to outmaneuver Republicans in the slightest. Mitch McConnell knows exactly what he needs to do to get this through, and that's anything. He doesn't give a shit if it makes him look like a hypocrite. He's going to ram this nominee through, get it uh, confirmed as soon as possible. And Democrats are just sitting idly by, and they're wagging their fingers. In fact, that's exactly what uh, Dianne Feinstein decided to do because she doesn't want to end the filibuster or pack the court. But I'm sure that, you know, this strongly worded tweet to Donald Trump and Mitch McConnell is going to change things for the Democrats. She tweeted out, Leader McConnell set the standard for Supreme Court nominations in an election year in 2016. Let the next president nominate a replacement. Under no circumstances should the Senate consider a nominee for Justice Ginsburg's seat until after the presidential inauguration. I mean, that's just... That's brilliant, Dianne Feinstein. I'm sure that Mitch McConnell is going to see that and he's going to be trembling. He's going to think, oh my God, Dianne Feinstein put out this strongly worded tweet so I can't go forward with this. It's exhausting. And just reading the news about this, it's hard to not like feel completely overwhelmed and demoralized because these are our fighters. Our best chance at stopping this from happening is is a bunch of incompetent clowns who are too afraid to fight or don't care. Now, someone who actually, thankfully, has been fighting, who's saying what I'm saying, that Democrats have to use every single procedural tool under their belt, is AOC. And she actually, thankfully, blasted Dianne Feinstein for refusing to um, actually fight fire with fire. So she responded to Dianne Feinstein's initial statement about not wanting to pack the quarter and the filibuster and she said, Senator Feinstein's protection of the filibuster is unjust and unacceptable. The filibuster wasn't made with purpose. It's the result of an accident in rulebook revision and bloomed as a cherished tool of segregationists. Now it empowers minority rule. That's not special. It's unjust. And I'm so thankful that she actually had the courage to call out a fellow Democrat. But what she's saying here is so true. Like, we don't say enough how outrageous it is that a minority party, the Republican Party, is in control of a majority of government and they are absolutely steering this country in a direction where a majority of its people don't want to go. Most Americans want Roe v. Wade. They want legal abortions, even if personally they wouldn't get an abortion themselves because they're at least you know logical enough to acknowledge that if you get rid of abortions that's not going to stop abortions it'll just increase the number of unsafe and illegal abortions that take place and if you're worried about death then maybe you should start being concerned with all the wars that our lawmakers keep sending us to right all the drone strikes that donald trump is approving um so you know for this party to continue to be in control and keep getting their way 
and you have this opposition party just sit back and do fuck all about it. It's just, it's infuriating. But at the same time, I get fired up because I'm angry, but then I just feel exhausted a moment later. I mean, this, we shouldn't have to keep fighting for our lives every fucking time anything happens. It's like whenever something happens, someone resigns from the Supreme Court, um, something politically happens, some big event we always have to worry, will Democrats fight for us? There should never be a question. They should just do it because we elect them to fight for us. And yet they don't do that. If they're not sitting on their asses, then they are actively discouraging fighting fire with fire. You have Dianne Feinstein's dumbass saying, no, we're not going to get rid of the filibuster. No, we're not going to pack the Supreme Court. Well, why don't you just switch sides, become a Republican? Because you're more useful to them than you are to us at this point, Diane. <sighs> So as you can see, I'm a little bit uh, irritated because this should be something that should come naturally to Democrats. If they genuinely cared, if they had a buy-in to democracy, then they would know what's at stake. But the fact that we have to scream at the top of our lungs to get them to do anything, it's just, it's infuriating and I'm so fucking sick of it. Fight! That's why you're there. Dianne Feinstein is 167 years old. You chose to run for another term. If you didn't want to fight any longer, then you shouldn't have ran. You shouldn't have sought re-election if you were just going to sit on your ass the entire fucking time. But you're there now. You got elected. So fight. What are you doing? But I'll leave that there because I feel like if I keep um, ranting, I'm just going to get meaner and meaner and end up insulting them more. So um, we'll leave that there. Um, at least... Some Democrats, like Ed Markey and AOC, are willing to fight, but most of them, I just don't think that they've got it in them. And if uh, this happens, if Trump actually gets his way, then they should absolutely pay for not fighting hard enough. They should face the repercussions of their inaction. They should be primaried and lose their elections.